the 4 milliamp source supply is 74 milliwatts. Determine the power absorbed or supplied by, by the 10 volt source. So in terms of where to start in this problem, they tell you that the 4 milliamp source supplies this much power. So here's the equation for power right here. So we have both P and I, so we can solve for V across the device. So just V is equal to P over I. Again, because they say that it supplies power, P is going to be negative. So negative 74 milli over 4 milli. So V is going to be negative 18.5 volts. Of course, this kind of polarity across the device will be labeled obeying passive sign convention. So here's the same V right here. Again, current entering the positive terminal, so plus minus. Okay, next, well, they asked for the, for the power absorber supplied by the 10 volt source. Again, so because P is equal to VI, we need both V and I to find the power. So V is going to be 10 volts because it's a 10 volt source. So our new, our new mission becomes to find the current through the 10 volt source because with that we can find the power. So we'll call it IS with the source current. So we're looking for a current and we use KCL to solve for currents. So we're going to use known currents that we can find to solve for IS. So our new, so our new mission becomes to find other currents and use that to find IS. First of all we know that across this 2 kilo ohms there is going to be 8 volts. By doing KVL, we can find that there's going to be 10.5 volts across this 3 kilo ohms. Then, by using Ohm's law and also passive sign convention, so the current must be going downwards, we just get 10.5 over 3,000 or 3.5 milliamps. This 2 kilo ohms over here is in parallel with the 10 volts, so matching polarity as well, plus minus 10 volts. Current will be going downwards because of passive sign convention once again. So now, basically, we can do KVL, sorry, KCL, at this bottom node here, and solve for IS. So KCL at the bottom node. N is equal to out. So what's entering the node? We have IS, 5 milliamps, and the 3.5 milliamps. All right, this will be equal to the 4 milliamps that's from the current source. So IS will, be, will then be negative uh, 4.5 milliamps. So then the power of the 10 volt source is going to be V times I, or just 10 times negative 4.5 milli, or negative 45 milliwatts. So again, because our power is negative, it means that we are supplying power. So 45 milliwatts being supplied. So here's our answer. OK, so let's move on to a different problem. So in this circuit, they're asking us to find the current I1 and the voltage VO. There's multiple ways to solve this, though. Um, we're going to use the voltage division twice just to solve this. So if we, if we first redraw the circuit, 12 volts right here, 2 kilo ohms. Well, first of all, we have 8 and 4 kilo ohms in series. That just gives us 12 kilo ohms. Now it'll be in parallel with 6K, which will give us 4,000 ohms. So here's our redrawn circuit. So we're going to use this 
voltage right here, call it Vx, which is equal to. So right here I'm just using voltage division because we have a known voltage, then all series resistors in a closed path in the circuit. And this will be 8 volts. So, so even though we, we found this Vx voltage right here in this simplified circuit, it still correlates to the voltage right here in the circuit across the 6 kilo ohms. So now we have the same kind of scenario. We have a known voltage and then all series resistors in a closed path in the circuit on the right hand side here. So now we can actually solve for VO by using Vx. Of course, this is just VO. There's also I1 to worry about, but VO is going to be equal to Vx times 4k over 8k plus 4k, which will be 8 thirds volts. So notice how the 6 kilo ohms played no role in the equation in for a voltage division because this is the known voltage. Here are the series resistors. So using that, you can then use your voltage division equation. For I1, this will, will just be Vx over 6k. And it's just by using Ohm's law. So this is going to be 4 thirds milliamps. And there you go. Okay, so let's do a problem involving the equivalent resistance now. So, so in this problem here, if you were to kind of eyeball it for a second, the first thing that you might try to do is to combine the 10 and 2 ohms in series, I mean, and, and that would be totally fine. So if you did that, you would have this right here. Okay, but after doing that, if you look at the nodes in this configuration, because a node is just a whole section of wire, you'll notice that every resistor has its node wrapped around it. Now for any current to flow through a, a resistor, you need a voltage difference, say two voltages V1 and V2. If V1 and V2 were equal, then you would get zero over R, which means zero amps. So in other words, if you have the same node on both sides of a resistor, you have the same voltage, so that would be like doing V1 minus V1 over R, so you get zero. Now every resistor here in this circuit has the same node on both sides of, of itself. So because there's only one node in this whole circuit, every resistor is called uh, shorted out. So this is shorted out, so is this, and this, and this one as well. So here RA, RAB is going to be zero ohms. So again, just, you know, being shorted out means that you have the same node on both sides of the device. So resistors can be shorted out, so it could current sources, voltage sources, anything. But yeah, here's our final answer. Though.